In this tutorial, I will show you how you can combine publishers, subscribers, and services in one single ROS2 node. And for this example, we are going to use Python. I'm going to start with this node here that I've created. So very simple and basic node that does nothing for now. And that is just spinning. Okay. If you want the complete step-by-step -step explanation about how to write this exact code and how to build it, etc. Then I have a complete course for uh, beginners, so ROS2 basics for beginners. You can check out the link in the description. And let's start with the code. So we have to write a publisher, a subscriber, and a service. I'm gonna start with the publisher. Okay, so let's add a publisher and I'm gonna use very simple examples and simple messages that we can just import here without any problem. Okay, so let's create a publisher here. So we do self dot Let's create, uh, let's name it pub and then self.create publisher. Okay, and first we need to give a message type. So, what do we want to publish? Here, let's say we simply want to publish a string message. Okay, just some text that we want to publish. So, I'm going to import from example interfaces dot msg import string. Okay, I can use this message from the uh, example interfaces package that's quite useful uh, for just publishing a string so let's put string and here we uh, as a publisher we choose what topic we want to publish to so let's just create a topic that's going to be some text all right so when you do a ROS topic list on the terminal you will see a topic named some text so i need to give the type and we need to give the name and also a Q size. So I just put 10, Don't you don't need to worry about this for now. It's not really important. All right, I have my publisher. And what do I do with this publisher? Well, I will publish some stuff and maybe I will use here, I will use a timer. So I will use a timer to say, I want to publish on this topic, let's say 10 times per second. So every 100 milliseconds. So to do this first, I will uh, create a, let's say publish, text okay i will just create a function so i can publish on the topic and let's create a message which is going to be a string and then we need to do message dot data because that's what's inside the string is equal to and just put hello and then we can do self dot pub dot publish with the message okay we publish the message by using the publisher that we have created here in the constructor, okay? And so we have this function to publish the message. Now we're gonna just call this function actually using a timer. So self.timer is equal to self.create timer, okay? And we need to give the period in second, okay? So that's gonna be 0 0.1, so 10 times per second. And then the callback is self publish text okay that's the uh, method we have created here make sure you don't add parentheses here all right so if i just run this node what's going to happen is that when the node is spinning this this is actually is going to be a callback okay the timer is going to fire 10 times per second and publish uh, the uh, text here hello on this topic great so we have one publisher now let's add a subscriber. So to add a subscriber, well, I just add here self.create subscription. So you can see that everything we create, we just put in the constructor, okay? I create a publisher and then I create a timer and then I create a subscriber with create subscription. I will need to give a message type and also a topic. So let's say this time that I'm just going to import something else. I'm going to import from example interfaces.msg import int64. Let's say we receive an integer number here. So that's going to be int64. And let's say that we are subscribing to a topic named temperature. So there is a temperature sensor. That's publishing, uh, maybe let's change instead of in 64, let's put float 64, okay, and here as well, float 64. Let's say you have a temperature sensor that's publishing the temperature on the temperature topic, 
using a float 64 uh, data. And so you need to put the message type here, the topic name, and then you need to provide a callback. So we're gonna add another callback. And as you will see, well, everything in ROS2, everything uses callbacks. So once you understand how to create a callback and how the callbacks are gonna work with each other, then you will see that it's basically super easy to just add more subscribers, add more timers, add more services, etc. So let's create a callback here. Let's say temperature callback. And we're gonna receive a message. That's gonna be a float 64, okay? I just provide the type here to say that we expect a float 64 and we can use the, uh, the auto completion here uh, also with VS code so that it's easier. And maybe, well, I don't know, uh, we just print uh, self dot get logger um, dot info with, let's print uh, message dot data. I just print the temperature that I receive. So I have my temperature callback and then here I can do create subscription with the type, the name, and then the callback self dot that's gonna be temperature callback. And I also need to provide a queue size and I'm just gonna put 10 as well. So what's gonna happen here is, well, we already have two callbacks, okay? We have a callback for the subscription that's gonna be fired whenever we receive a message on temperature. So that can be, well, never, if there is no message published on this topic, that can be any frequency, basically one, uh, one per second, 10 per second, 500 per second. It depends on actually the publisher for the temperature topic. So you have one callback here. Then you have another callback here uh, that's gonna be fired. You can see every 0.1 second. Okay, and what's gonna happen is when you make the node spin, well, the node will be kind of stuck here, it will be kept alive and any callback will be able to be uh, triggered. The important thing is that you don't stay too long in one callback, okay? So don't stay too long in, so this is gonna be a, a callback for the timer. Don't stay too long, don't do a time.sleep or something like this in this callback and also on that callback. So that all the callbacks can be executed one by one very, very fast. And here, well, you could combine this even more because the, the publisher and the subscriber are completely different. But you could combine this even more. You could, for example, create a variable here to store the current temperature well, it's as a string. So when you receive the temperature, you could store the temperature. And then, so like, let's say self dot temperature. Uh, let's initialize it to zero. And then let's here, instead of printing it, well, we can print it, but we can also do self dot temperature is equal to msg.data, okay? So you actually, you store it as a float number here. So you store the temperature here and maybe you could publish uh, here, str self temperature. So you get the temperature here and you could also publish some uh, thing related to this uh, variable here in this other callback, okay? So you can see by using class attributes, you can already combine the different callbacks in a smarter way, okay? So one callback will use the data that you get from another callback as an example. What you could also do is to say that from this callback, you're gonna call publish, so self.publish text, okay? You could call the uh, callback, so publish text from the temperature callback, okay? You could combine this as you want as long as you don't spend too much time on each callback. And also make sure that you don't create a callback hell, which means that you're gonna call, so you're gonna call this callback here, and in this callback you call this one, and so you create an infinite loop of callbacks calling each other. So make sure that you don't, well, you don't call the callbacks in a loop. But if you keep the code like this, well, you can see it's quite clean, and we have already a publisher and a subscriber. And now let's add a service server. So for this, I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna still use example interfaces. So from example interfaces dot SRV import, and I have the set bool. So that's a quite simple service that contains. Well, let's actually see on the terminal here that contains so a request here that's gonna be a bool data. Okay, to set a boolean, and then three dashes, and here it's gonna be the response. So we have a success boolean and also a string message, right? So that's that's the service we're gonna use here. 
So let's create a service server. How to do that? Well, I'm just going to add another here, self dot create. This time it's going to be create service. And I need to pass the type. It's going to be set bool. I need to pass the service name. So we are deciding the service name. And well, let's say that we are going to name the service start robot. So you have a simple service to say, I want to start the robot, yes or no, with a Boolean flag. Okay, just a simple example. And then we need to pass, of course, a callback because whenever, so this is a service server. So whenever the client is going to call the server, we need to process the request in a callback. So I'm going to add a callback here. Let's call it start robot callback. And so we have self and then we receive the request and the response. Also, I'm going to put uh, here this a colon with set bool dot request and colon with set bool dot response. OK, so I have a better auto completion then for the request and response in the uh, function. And here, what do I do? Well, I just process the service just like I would do it in a, if it was along in the node. So let's say if uh, request dot we have data uh, is true. So if it is true, then we can just do, let's say, self dot get logger with info starts the robot. OK, and maybe an else. Um, yeah, and maybe an else with stop the robots or something else where here it's just a dummy example. All right, you may process more data. You may choose to return something that's uh, a success or an error. Okay, whatever, depending on the data that you have. And then we have to response dot success is equal to true. I'm not going to put a, a message. Let's just do return response. All right, so we just, uh, well, it's just a dummy example for the service server where we just, depending on the request, we do something and then we just set the response and we return. And you can see I don't I don't have anything that waits here. Okay, I don't make the thread slip. Okay, that's very important. You can see we have one callback, now we have two and three callbacks. And each callback is very, very fast. Okay, we don't wait for anything. And well, I would need to add a callback here. So self dot, it's gonna be starts robot callback. Okay, so I have my callback that's registered here for the service. And one thing I could do also is from this callback, from the service callback, I could also call the publish text method. Okay, I could use the publisher in the service callback. So one thing not to do, I would say, is don't call a subscriber callback from a service callback. Okay, that's this one you should not call it by yourself and this one you should not call it by yourself. This is going to be called whenever you receive either a here message for the subscriber or a request for the service. Okay, and so that's why usually what I do is when I have a subscriber callback, I also name it callback here in the function name and for a service, I also name it callback. All right, so any function that's named callback then I know that I should not call this directly on, on the code manually. This should be called automatically with uh, the subscriber or the service mechanism. Okay, so as you can see, the code is still quite clean and we have one publisher, one subscriber and one service combined in just one node. Okay, and also, as I told you, well, in ROS2, almost everything is a callback. So make sure you don't spend too much time in one callback. And then all callbacks in your node will be correctly executed. And well, you can have as many as you want. And then as an opening, well, I say don't wait in a callback, but this is because this spin is going to just run all of the callbacks in just one thread. OK, so if you need and that's a bit more advanced, you might need to create more threads OK, directly from the callbacks. You could set up some threads or also use a different ROS2 executor here with multi-threaded executor, also a combination of both. OK, and that would be kind of a next step for you is to learn how to properly do multi-threading with ROS2. Thank you for watching. Now subscribe here to get more tutorials in the future. Also, check out my online courses if you like what I teach. 
links in the description. And see you in the next one.